October 21st, 2025. At exactly 2.35, Russian airspace near Bryansk. Alarm! Missile locked! The warnings in the Su-24's cockpit were screaming. Outside, in pitch darkness, an S-300 missile was approaching at deadly speed. The pilot yanked the stick, slamming the plane toward the ground with incredible g-force, while the co-pilot desperately hit the chaff-slash-flare button in a last-ditch effort. They narrowly escaped death by seconds, but the real deadly payload had already been launched. Two aging fencers had just unleashed hell from their wings. Four Storm Shadow cruise missiles. Each was 5.1 meters long and weighed 1,300 kilograms and each carried a 450-kilogram brooch tandem warhead designed to penetrate even Russia's most secure bunkers. A total of 1,800 kilograms of pure destructive power was now streaking across the landscape at near-sonic speed. Hundreds of kilometers away, breaths were held at the Ukrainian command center. The plan was a suicide mission with deadly risks. Russian air defenses still posed a significant threat to both pilots and missiles. Russian generals believed this facility was protected by S-400s and layered defenses. However, a wrong decision at the command level would jeopardize the entire defense. And in seconds, those four ghost missiles, loaded with 1,800 kilograms of explosives and weighing a total of 5,200 kilograms, would plunge into the Kremlin's bomb laboratory. October 21st, 2025, 0100 from the National Defense Control Center, NDCC, in Moscow, to the local Bryansk, Kursk, and Belgorod Air Defense Command posts. All screens reflected an unprecedented nightmare. This was not a recognizable attack coming from a single direction. It was a digital tsunami of hundreds, perhaps thousands, of unidentified targets approaching from different vectors, at different altitudes, and at different speeds. Ukraine seemed to have launched everything it had at once. Bober, Flamingo, UJ-22, modified S-200, Neptune, Peklo. Even HIMARS rockets and modified Hellfire variants were in the air. Eight different regions of Russia were burning simultaneously. Bryansk, Kursk, Belgorod, Tula, Yaroslavl, Rostov, Volgograd, Penza, and even the Moscow Oblast were burning simultaneously. Systems were sounding alarms. Operators were struggling to distinguish targets. The first waves had begun hours earlier. Pansir S-1 and Tor M-2 batteries were wasting their valuable missiles hunting these cheap targets. Operators were tired, stressed, confused. The air defense commander in Bryansk was caught between conflicting orders from Moscow, protect Moscow, protect strategic facilities, hold the border, and the chaos on the ground. Every new dot appearing on the screen looked indistinguishable from the previous one. Which was the priority? Hundreds of drones near the border or a few suspicious, faster-moving contacts allegedly heading towards Moscow. The Russian commander ordered to focus on the closest and most numerous threats. This was the most deadly critical mistake of that night. This was the cornerstone of Ukraine's plan. To paralyze Russian air defenses with sensory overload, render the command structure incapable of decision-making, and open a corridor for the real hunters. As Russian generals cheered victory, believing they had repelled this massive swarm, they were actually watching their own defense network collapse. The system had reached saturation. The operators were exhausted. Their guard was down. 0130, northern Ukraine, near Chernihiv, a scattered runway. In the midst of this chaos, two Sukhoi Su 24 M fencers revved their engines to full power on the dark makeshift runway. These aging warriors had been specially prepared for tonight. Their fuselages were coated in radar absorbing paint, their avionics modernized and most importantly, each had two Storm Shadow cruise missiles, four in total, skillfully integrated into their underbelly and wing pylons. This was a risky configuration that pushed the Su-24's theoretical load limits, but it was what the mission demanded. The targets were a massive chemical explosives facility producing critical solid fuel components for Russian ballistic missiles and rockets, located approximately 350 kilometers away, near the town of Seltso in Bryansk Oblast the Kremlin's bomb lab. As the pilots made their final checks in the cockpit, with its mix of old analog gauges and new digital displays, their faces showed steely determination. The mission's impossibilities were clear. The Su-24s had a large radar signature and limited electronic countermeasure ECM capabilities. However, 
Ukrainian intelligence was counting on the complacency that had set in among the Russian command and the weaknesses in the Bryansk sector. The most advanced S-400s had been redeployed elsewhere, and most importantly, the Russians did not believe that the aging Su-24s could penetrate so deeply and fire four sophisticated weapons like the Storm Shadow. This element of surprise was key to the operation. Ahead of the pilots, two small, low-radar signature specialized EW electronic warfare drones would fly, guiding and protecting them. These drones were designed to blind and deceive Russian radars. They were the Su-24's invisibility cloaks, 0145. Two Su-24s fired their afterburners and shot off the short runway, immediately hugging the ground. With their wings swept back to maximum, they began to advance at an altitude of only 45 to 60 meters, at a speed of Mach 0.8, approximately 980 kilometers per hour, following the terrain. Treetops and power lines blurred just below the cockpit window. Flying at this altitude and speed meant pushing the limits of both man and machine. While the lead EW drones applied instant jamming against the radar signals they detected, the Su-24 pilots watched every new signal on their RWR screens with bated breath. At any moment, a lock-on and a deadly missile could come. This was not just a matter of skill, but also a war of nerves. 220. When they crossed the border, the signals on the RWR turned into hell. The Bryansk sector was awake, but its focus was scattered. Hundreds of drones were still coming from different directions. Neptune and Peklo missiles were hitting radar stations and command centers in the south and west. The Russian Air Defense Commander's command screen in Bryansk was now nothing but incomprehensible electronic noise. The system had collapsed. The two weak contacts created by the Su-24s were lost in this chaos, or, again, classified as low-priority targets. This critical error gave the Ukrainian pilots vital seconds. Unnoticed, they advanced toward their target with their deadly payload. EW drones formed an invisible shield around the Su-24s. 0235 Zulu. Launch moment. However, a stubborn S-300 battery locked its engagement radar onto one of the Su-24s despite all the jamming. The cockpit alarm screamed, Missile lock! Six o'clock! Evasive maneuver! The pilot, in an instant reflex, put the aircraft into a hard J-turn maneuver pushing its limits, while the co-pilot fired the chaff-slash-flare system. The cloud of metal particles and heat successfully deceived the approaching 5V55 series missile. The missile passed a few hundred meters above the aircraft and exploded in the darkness. This critical moment was a death narrowly avoided by seconds. They were now in the launch window, and time was running out. They couldn't afford to lose even a second. The launch point was approximately 50 kilometers inside the Ukrainian border. The target was about 250 kilometers away. For the first Su-24 launch, target coordinates loaded. Missiles 1 and 2, release! For the second Su-24 launch, target coordinates loaded. Missiles 3 and 4 are free. Four Storm Shadow missiles detached from the Su-24's pylons. After a momentary drop, the missiles fired their own micro-turbo TRI-6030 turbojet engines and entered their trajectories. They quickly descended and switched to a flight profile that followed the terrain. GPS-INS and TERPROM navigation systems guided them towards Bryansk, while IIR, infrared imaging, seeker heads, which would engage in the terminal phase, searched for their target. A flight of approximately 16 to 17 minutes had begun. They were vengeful ghosts, flying below the radar. As soon as the missiles separated, the Su-24s turned around as if by instinct. The pilots, revving their engines to full power and flying at the lowest possible altitude, perhaps as low as 30 meters, escaped slightly west of their original route. The EW drones returned with them, leaving behind a dense electronic jamming and deception curtain. The Russians' helplessness had begun. The hunters had escaped, and the deadly payloads were heading towards their target. The most dangerous part of their mission was over, but the peak of the operation had yet to come. Four storm shadows, traveling at approximately 950 kilometers per hour, were skimming the terrain. For most of their flight, chaos continued in southern Russia. Drone attacks and other missile strikes kept the Russian IADS busy, creating corridors for the storm shadows to infiltrate. Local Pantsir and Tor batteries struggled to detect the threat until the missiles were upon them. Several interceptor missiles were fired. One missile was reportedly shot down by a Pantsir just a few kilometers from its target. However, the remaining three missiles had entered the terminal phase. 251. 
Three Storm Shadow missiles reached the target seconds apart. The Terminal 1 IIR seekers flawlessly matched the most critical sections of the heat-emitting facility, the solid rocket fuel mixing and casting units, and the finished product storage areas, with the three-dimensional target image stored in their memory. The missiles locked onto their targets with a final precision maneuver and dove in. The 450-kilogram brooch tandem warheads carried by each missile functioned flawlessly. Meanwhile, there is a donation campaign for Ukraine by United24 in the video description. If you want to take part in the fight for freedom, we are waiting for your support. Now let's get back to our main topic. First missile penetrated the roof of the main mixing unit. The leading explosive cleared the path and the main warhead detonated inside, igniting the first inferno. Second missile. Seconds later, it plunged into the main hangar where finished solid fuel blocks were stored. The explosion ignited tons of stored fuel, causing a massive secondary explosion. Third missile. Amidst the chaos and structural damage created by the first two explosions, it struck the building housing the casting unit, further spreading the fire and ensuring the irreversible destruction of the facility. This was no simple explosion. This was an uncontrollable, catastrophic chain reaction. A massive fireball rose hundreds of meters into the sky, turning night into day. The shockwave that followed rattled windows in the city of Bryansk, kilometers away. A giant mushroom-shaped cloud of smoke formed over the facility. It was the mark left by the dagger plunged into the heart of the Russian war machine. It was now impossible for this facility to resume operations. Billions of dollars of investment and years of know-how had been reduced to ashes. Russia's production chain for Grad rockets, artillery shells, and ballistic missiles had been severed. The Russian command watched the situation helplessly from satellite images and local reports. Their air defenses had been breached, and a strategic facility had turned to ashes before their eyes. Thanks to a surprise mistake and unexpected oversaturation in the Russian command structure, almost all of the missiles had reached their target. Ukraine, with its old but modernized platforms and lethal missiles provided by the West, had once again succeeded in bringing the war to Russia's heart. The ratio between the cost of the operation, approximately $4 million in missiles and operational expenses, and the billion-dollar strategic value and production loss of the destroyed facility proved the overwhelming effectiveness of such precision strikes. The shockwaves created by the Storm Shadow missiles that reduced the Seltso chemical explosives plant in Bryansk Oblast to ashes on the night of October 21, 2025, were not merely physical. This operation created a multi-layered strategic earthquake effect that shook the course of the war, Russia's military doctrine, the limits of Western support for Ukraine, and even the balance of power within the Kremlin itself. While the shock of the explosion in Bryansk was still reverberating, reports began to emerge of explosions being heard near Moscow. At the same time, unusual activity was observed on open-source flight tracking sites such as flight radar. A fleet of Russian government-owned Il-96, Il-62, and Tupolev Doomsday aircraft took off one after another from Moscow's Vnukovo airport, heading east toward the Ural Mountains or Siberia. This was a strong indication that top Kremlin officials, and potentially Putin himself, had been evacuated to shelters, believing the capital was no longer safe. The destruction of the facility in Bryansk, the Bryansky Kimicheski Zavod Imeni Piatidisya Tiletia SSSR, was one of the most successful and daring applications of Ukraine's logistical strangulation strategy, aimed at choking the Russian war machine at its source rather than on the front lines. This facility was not an ordinary factory, but a vital organ feeding the firepower of the Russian army. The direct and indirect effects of its destruction on the front were devastating. The facility was known to be one of the main producers of solid fuel for the BM-21 Grad MLRS, one of the most widely used rocket systems by the Russian army. The halt in this production directly constrained the production of Grad rockets and consequently their use on the front lines. Grad systems were the backbone of the Russian Army's area suppression and infantry support. This disruption significantly reduced the effectiveness of Russian artillery, particularly in areas of intense combat. Ukrainian forces began reporting a reduction in rocket pressure on their positions. The facility also produced a significant portion of the propellant required for various conventional artillery ammunition, from tank shells to mortar rounds. The halt in production further deepened the already existing ammunition shortage. Russian artillery batteries were forced to tighten firing discipline and use ammunition more sparingly. 
This situation created more opportunities for Ukraine's counter-battery activities and began to shift the balance of firepower on the front lines in Ukraine's favor. More strategically, the facility was known to produce specialized fuel and explosive components vital for long-range ballistic and cruise missiles, Iskander, Caliber, etc. The loss of this production will seriously affect Russia's capacity to continue terrorist attacks on Ukrainian cities and critical infrastructure in the medium and long term. New missile production will slow down, and existing stocks will have to be used more carefully. This attack was a perfect example of a domino effect. A single precision strike broke multiple links in the enemy's production chain at once. This meant directly limiting the firepower of Russian soldiers on the front lines at its source, and the impact would be felt for months. Russia would have to find alternative facilities or modernize existing ones to replace this production capacity, which would require time, resources, and serious planning. Ukraine's multi-layered attack not only hit military targets, but also succeeded in striking fear into the heart of the Russian leadership. If a strategic facility hundreds of kilometers behind the front lines, supposedly protected by S-400s, could be hit so easily, where was truly safe? This question was now gnawing at the minds of not just ordinary citizens, but also the Kremlin elite. The Bryansk attack laid bare the reality that the cost and danger of the war had penetrated Russia's heart, bypassing the propaganda wall. Putin's promise of stability was now being questioned, seeping through the breach opened by the Storm Shadow missiles. The Bryansk operation, with its military, technological, and psychological dimensions, has the potential to be a turning point in the Ukraine war. Factors such as the heavy blow to Russia's logistical capacity, the shaking of the S-400 myth, the West seeing through its Red Line bluff, and the war being brought to Russia's home front have put the Kremlin in a difficult position, both militarily and politically. The game may not be over, but Moscow no longer dictates the rules. Ukraine and its allies are taking decisive steps to seize the initiative and turn the tide of the war in their favor. The flames in Bryansk have consumed not only a factory, but also Russia's illusion of invincibility and impregnability. Thank you for choosing us.